Hello everybody and welcome. This is a CrazySmarts.com production. So if you have any questions, just follow the link on the right side, www.CrazySmarts.com to follow the tutorial online. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Ventrilo.com website and the download page within there. And we're going to find our server program and we're going to download the Linux i386 32-bit architecture. We're going to be doing this on Ubuntu 8.04 server edition. So this is the relevant server program that we need to download. And what this does is we just downloaded it to our desktop right here. And we're going to bring that file over to the server now. So I've already got a session created and we have just completed the file transfer. So now it's on our server. So let's pull up a command prompt and let's interact with that file we just downloaded. So we first need to extract it, and we do that with the tar command. And now let's list, see the extra folder, and let's see what's in that folder. Now what we need to do is edit the main configuration file. This is the, the Ventrilo server.ini file. And what you're going to want to edit within here is the names, name basically is the biggest thing and the admin password. So this is an awesome server. So let's call it an awesome server. And the admin password you're going to want to keep secret, so let's keep it secret. Anyway, save it out and then exit. We're going to clear the screen here. And let's see if we actually started our Ventrilo server. Great, it's ready. Looks like we already have a connection accepted. Well, that just happens to be myself. And as you can see, we've already got a session created with the Ventrilo server. Cool. The problem is, if I hit this X or I log out of the server, the Ventrilo server is going to actually stop and falter. So what we need to do is put the process in the background. So if we hit Control C here, We'll kill the server, and then let's put an ampersand after the command, along with parentheses. This is what we're going to want to do. So this puts it in the background. So again, we connect it right back up. Now we can actually interact with uh, the terminal again, and let's see if the server process is actually running. I use the netstat command to see if it's running. Okay, great. We have 3784 here. That's the default port for Ventrilo server and you can see it's in listening state here. That means that we have successfully created a server process. So what you need to do from here is open up your firewall so you can let your friends in. So what I like to do is find out what my default gateway is using the ipconfig all command. And you can see that I have the 1.1 here. So I'm going to open up Firefox and I'm going to go to my firewall. In this case, it's a Linksys router, as you'll see, applications and gaming, and the port forwarding page is what you're going to need. This will differ per router. I'm just showing you on a basic Linksys router. And I've already made the entry for you. The vent, the 3874, that's the port that you saw under the netstat command. And this is the local IP address of your server. And you do need to enable it, and then you're just going to want to save the settings. All right, now you've opened a hole in your firewall, and you can let your buddies in. Awesome. So let's take this a bit further. I showed you the netstat command and remember this 3784. I just want to show you a little something that you can change to help uh, organize your server processes a little bit better. So I like to edit the services file on the Linux system and I like to go down to the bottom and I'm going to add vent and I'm going to type 3784 a couple times here with the TC based protocol and 3784 again UDP Cool, I'm going to save that file out, and let's run that netstat command again I just showed you. And look, now we have an English name. Now we're able to tell what server process is actually running than a number. I like to do this a lot better, because when you're running a lot of server processes, it keeps it a lot more organized for you. So, now you're probably wondering, well, how do I get my buddies into the server? I mean, I can get in here on my LAN, so what you need to do is give them your public IP address by going to a website like whatismyipaddress.com. I'm not going to hit enter, because I don't trust you evil people out there. But I just wanted to show you that that's how you would get your public IP address. That's the basics on how to install a Linux server. There are things you can do like setting that startup script so that you no longer have to issue the server manually every time you start up the server that the, the process will start up alone so you don't have to issue any commands. So anyway, this has been a crazysmarts.com production. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on www.crazysmarts.com. Hope you enjoyed your stay.